Aloha, everyone. Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com with another weekend update. Boy, oh boy, this market rally is very impressive. <clears throat> I believe it was in the last video lesson when I said that we got above that downtrend line. We needed to stay above it. We retested it. We're above it. We got the 21 above the 50. The other long-term moving averages are starting to curl. Everything is looking good. We're triple green on the indicators. I'll, rem I'll remind everybody tertiary, quadrary, prices first, volume, support, resistance lines, moving averages, then everything you see here. But when price is doing this, and I'm confirmed on the lower indicators, all is well. And I'm also going to remind everybody, since the sell-off started in January, you will notice these blue lines, these spikes are called pocket pivot point signals. During the entire decline, until the October lows, the SPY did not produce any. Since the October lows, the SPY has produced one, two, three, four, five, six. The up down volume ratio is great. The breadth is great. New highs to new lows are starting to expand. Everything looks good. We have the inverse head and shoulder. All is well, right? Well, Here's the slight problem. All is well, but I am still not receiving what I consider to be grade A signals. I continue to get a ton, a ton, possibly the most I've ever received while a market is actually in a downtrend, grade B signals. <clears throat> They're working. They're not working. Some aren't filling. The ones that fill don't run. The ones that don't fill explode higher. The ones that make moves like lace, because of my break-even stop methodology that I employed way too late, if I don't employ it, I'm long lace here. I take profits after day one on some of the position, and I... Logical, rational, final stop loss level is this low right here. But instead, I employ break-even stops, and I get to miss out on a 220% move in lace. I would like to say that this is an outlier, but this has been very normal in this market. So, is it me, or is it the market? It's a combination, guys. It's always a two-way street. But that being said, we are still not in the sweet spot yet. I'm going to remind everybody that the Fed was hiking rates in 1994, which in my opinion is very similar to now. Now, just to let you know, from 2016 to 2018, the Fed was hiking rates and we rallied, but we were in an uptrend, and we didn't really have to look for any kind of pivot once in 2017 we broke out and continued to rally. This time around, the Fed is still hiking rates, but we're trending lower. Why I think that this is more, excuse me, like 1994 to 1995 is because in 1994 to 1995, we had rising inflation, but a strong economy with a game-changing technology, the internet. Right now, we still, and by I mean rising rates, I also mean rising inflation. Right now, we have rising inflation, rising rates, and an economy that remains very strong. Did you see the jobs numbers this past week? Mm, really doesn't sound like a recession to me. So, can the market bottom? With interest rates being hiked by the Fed? Absolutely. But the easy money comes after the pause and cut. So I want to remind everybody, if you think that we've missed the bottom, it's possible if you did not buy on this day here that you did miss the bottom. But have you missed the heart of the move? If we are following the 1994 to 1995 all the way to the year 2000 script and artificial intelligence, which I believe it is, 
is the internet 2.0, then we need to look once again at that time frame to see what we're dealing with. Now, unfortunately, on Telechart version 18, we can't go back that far even on a weekly. So let's switch over to my other Telechart. All right, now that we've done that, by the way, here's an AI list for you guys. All these stocks are AI related. I would keep all those on watch. So I'm gonna remind everybody, in 1994, the Fed was hiking rates. They hiked rates from February 1994 to February 1995. The market didn't pull at all. They then paused and they finally cut in July. And once they cut, look at what happened all the way to 2000. Now in 1997, there was a hike. In 98, they cut. And then in 1999, the aggressive rate hike started, which then eventually led to the top in the market. But the strongest leg of that uptrend with massive, massive winners during this period came after the Fed started to cut rates. After we bottomed, if we get more granular, we can see as the Fed hiked rates in February, which is where the sell-off started, kept hiking rates, kept hiking rates, kept hiking rates, pause. Then, actually, let's speed this up, cut. And off to the races we went. And if you guys don't know and or are under the age of 30, pro probably 40. I don't know. I've been around a long time. Read uh, how the, oh my goodness. Can't even think of the book's name. And I'm reading it right now. But John Boyk's book. Oofa, I had to go look at it. Wow. How, legend, how legendary traders made millions. Read that book. Study the 1990s to the year 2000 and you will see the monster runs that happened in stocks during that time. So just know, if October is a bottom, it'll be a weird bottom because this is the longest bear market from the highs in February 2021 in the IWM, from the highs in January 2022 in the SPY, to now where we do not either see a panic sell-off via the VIX over 40 or retail panic selling, or a QE pivot, so that's outside the norm. But if this is a secular bull market, which how I judge secular bull markets is very simple, are we below, on a weekly time frame, the 200 SMA? Have we retested the 200 SMA and failed? We did in this era. We did in this era. We did not hear. We have not here. In fact, we have not failed the 200 SMA via the parameters that I've continually discussed in these video lessons on any of the indices. So if anyone wants to know why, I still say this is a secular bull market because this is a secular bear, this is a secular bear, this is a cyclical bear because we bounced back immediately, did not fail at the 200 rollover, and this is still a cyclical bear. So we don't necessarily need the VIX to hit 40. We don't necessarily need a panic low, but I need better looking charts. So what do I wanna see? When do I think those better looking charts will come? The same way they always do. I got the VIX below 20. I got the IWM leading the SPY, but it's not really leading the SPY. It's not a 45 degree angle, it's more like a 20 degree angle, the leadership of the IWM versus the rest of the market. But what I'm missing is something that I always have during my quote, quote, easy dollar markets. On a monthly time frame, the time segment volume. I have always, notice 1995 to 2000, we're green. Notice, 2003 to 2007, green. Notice 2009, 
even all the way to 2014 green. Notice after this long squeeze to 2017, which was very lucrative for me. And then in 2020, we're green. Are we green right now? Does it look like we're about to turn up anytime soon? And remember, this can change on a dime. Just hasn't changed yet. On any of the indices? No. So despite being back in an uptrend off the October lows, this is still a hard penny, not an easy dollar market. And if you believe you've missed the bottom, trust me, we have a lot of time. Okay, so we always showcase winners because every swing idea that I give out in these video lessons have been winners, but I wanna go over a recent loser. I took this long tight squeeze. So just to let you know, I have a mega cap list, an ETF list, a current leaders list, and a can slim quality list. I'm always looking for squeezes, red dots and yellow dots, consolidations around the 21 EMA. Now, technically on SLV, the buy is when it moves above 2254. Did that happen on this day? Negative. So technically, per the rules, via the squeeze, if you get long at a breakout above the recent highs, there is no signal. But I got a nice candle over candle hammer above the 50 SMA on top of the 21 EMA with green chicken money flow. I took a cheater long. Immediately reversed, I put half of my trailing sell stops here, put 25% here, and my final stop here. But look at what SLV did on Friday. It gapped down. So the hint was never broke out first off. And also look at all these wicks. Wick, wick, reversal, confirm, reversal, 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 breakdown. Was it a bad trade? Yeah, yeah, probably. But what I'm starting to learn about these tight, tight, tight squeezes is if the consolidation isn't completely clean, it actually might be bearish. So WFRD, which was a grade A setup, resolves out of it with the red dot, then gray, then green. Notice it works. The last high quality stock to do that TTC started to resolve out of it, started to resolve out of it, started to resolve out of it, but never went green to the upside and eventually failed and is really now just chopping around. So what I'm starting to learn is this is how another, this is yet another hint that we're not exactly in a bullish, easy dollar market. These would normally clear and break out and move higher. And right now, I don't have anything setting up. One red dot, one red dot. This basically failed. This is working with the red dots, but this is not a clean setup. So I still, right now, don't have any grade A setups on the canceling side or via the signals that I look for. So I would expect that the market's going to need to pull back short term. And then hopefully we can hold some support levels, get those grade A setups, get a better market. But I'm going to end this market lesson with this final picture. You can be bullish. You can be bearish. But in, well, until I am personally outside of this box, I'm in the choppish camp. All right, everyone. So as a thank you for expanding your knowledge about the stock market and making yourself a better trader, investor, and hopefully human being, this is my new long recommendation for everyone for Monday. Now, that being said, I don't have a ton of conviction behind this, but I am taking this trade. ALNY, I have a candle over candle above the 50 and 21 SMA, proper EMA stacks, pocket pivot point signal and heavier above average volume. I'm in a long squeeze. I got green TSV and green CMF. I'm gonna get long above the high of the day. And if I get filled, I'm calculating my risk to this low. And that will be my final stop. Before, if it wasn't working, I would immediately add a break even stop. Right now I'm letting it work. Now in a raging bull market, I calculate my size to this low and give it room to work here. In a weaker bull market, you know, calculate to here, risk to here. But for right now, here to here. All right, everybody, going to wrap the video lesson up there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next weekend.